Hi, welcome to Rocky Metal Invasion. My name is Steve. Coming up on the show today, I'm doing Bonfire and their album, Fireworks. All right, here we are back inside. Um, so how about that for production values? Uh, rock and Metal Invasion sparing no expense to put on some fireworks because we are doing today Bonfire and their album, Fireworks. All right, so... Um, to be honest with you, it's actually uh, Guy Fawkes uh, Day here in New Zealand, so there's fireworks going off all over the place. But um, yeah, so I thought, appropriate, let's let's have a look at one of my favourite albums, the album Fireworks by the band Bonfire. Now, for me, Bonfire is a bit of a, a bit of a funny one in the sense that I really like the album Fireworks. Their other albums are good, but not great. Um, but yeah, Fireworks for me is a very solid album. So I thought I'll talk about it... Um, today, uh, but also just um, talk about the band a little bit. So it's actually, a, they're a German band. Um, the, their first album was actually um, this one here, so called Don't Touch the Light. Um, yeah, Don't Touch the Light. Um, and this came out in 1986. But yeah, I am of course talking about their second album. This is the one that really got them the most attention, Fireworks. And this, there's two different covers, uh, but this one... Um, uh, is the one I've got, and interesting, the back cover, it's got a picture of the guys there, um, I've mentioned this before, for some reason it's got a question mark uh, on, <laughs> uh, maybe, the, I, I mentioned that I, I thought maybe the question mark, because they weren't actually sure what, what song they were going to put on the album, because um, there are um, a number of, well there's a couple of good B-side uh, tracks that, uh, that actually didn't make the album, but um, yeah, so it's got... Um, it's got a question mark there, but it's actually the song uh, Fantasy that's the question mark. Uh, but yeah, so um, so we've got uh, five songs on side one and five songs on side two. And then like I said, there were there were some really good B-sides as well. Uh, so good that I you know I picked up the 12-inch um, singles that had them as B-sides. But let's um yeah, let's talk about the band a little bit. So um, the, the two main guys uh, Hans Zilla. Now he's the um, he's the guitarist. Um, yeah, I think that's Hans there. And the vocalist is now he's not in the band anymore. But um, yeah, he is. Um, what's his name? This guy here. That uh, yeah. So Claus Leesman is he's the vocalist, and he yeah. So he's he's been the vocalist on uh, most of their albums. Um, but there are times when he's left the band um, and he's currently not in the band at the moment. But Hans also, who actually I think formed the band like way back in the 70s before, because um, they were originally they were known as, um, they weren't known as Bonfire. So originally, yeah, they were known as uh, Kakumin, Kakumin, who they released an album, um, you know, around the mid 80s. But yeah, that was the band originally. It was it was him and uh, Klaus Leesman. But um but yeah, then they um, they changed their name to Bonfire, and yeah, you know, a few different members. In fact, you know, if you look online, you can see they've had, there's a big list of past members for this band. But yeah, it's kind of you know, um, uh, Claus and um, Hans are the, the the two main people. Interestingly enough, though, too, even though it's Hans's band. And he's still in the band now. He did actually leave after this album. So he did leave the band for a little bit. But um, I might talk about that after I've just uh, gone through this album. So Ready for Action. Uh, sorry, Ready for Reaction. That's the first track. It's a great riff that kicks this one off. Um, I really love this one. Great um, album. Now, I remember picking this up on cassette back in the day. Put it in the Walkman. I was on the bus home and playing it. And uh, yeah, I loved that song straight away. I thought this was amazing. Um, Nevermind's also another very strong song that um, carries on after that. And then we've got Sleeping All Alone, which there's, there are some songs on here that for me are a little bit... Uh, just, just don't quite do it for me. Um, just a little bit too bit too soft, but the lyric, lyrically it's not great. Um, I just think they're much better when they go heavy. Um, so yeah, didn't like that one that much. Champion's okay, it's okay. But, uh, but back on track with uh, Don't Get Me Wrong, that's another good song. So for me, Ready for a Reaction, never mind. Don't Get Me Wrong, the three best songs on this album, uh, on this uh, side one. 
And then on side two, great song to kick it off, Sweet Obsession. Now, this uh, Sweet, Sweet Obsession is actually a song that they co-wrote with um, Joe, uh, yeah, Joe Lynn Turner, uh, also Jack Ponty as well. He's quite a well-known songwriter. Um, here's their Inside Sleeve. Now, this Inside Sleeve is actually, the, I think, the one of the other covers. So the, you might, if you've got this album, you might have a cover that looks a little bit like this. Um, it's got the four guys on it. But, um, yeah, that's the insert on my one. And, um, yeah, there we go. It's not a question mark on the insert. It's fantasy. But on the back, it's a question mark. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, anyway, that's side one. Oh, production, by the way, Michael Wagner. So it sounds amazing. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, like I said, Sweet Obsession kicking off side two. Um, Rock Me Now, another really good song. It starts off it's kind of soft, but then... Really kicks in, uh, rocks really well. Good song. Uh, again, American Nights, a little bit like Sleeping All Alone, a little bit uh, lyrically not great. Uh, one of my lesser favorite, you know, less favorite songs on there. Uh, Fantasy as well. It's okay. You give it a try. Yeah, it's all right. I just think they missed they missed something there by maybe not including a couple of the the songs that didn't make the album. So um, there's two songs that didn't make the album so much better. I would have got rid of American Nights and Sleeping All Alone. And um, I would have instead included, I'll show you the 12-inch um, songs, uh, Sweet Obsession. Oh, actually, I'll show this one first. So Give It A Try, which is one of the singles, uh, had a B-side Cold Days. Now, Cold Days is on the CD version of Fireworks, but not on the vinyl version. And it's such a great song, really good. So I would have had that one on, and also another B-side I would have had on there. Um, and it, it's talked about here on the Sweet Obsession 12 inch single, uh, plus previously unreleased bonus track, Angel in White. Angel in White's really good also. Um, so yeah, I would have I would have had that on there. Uh, interestingly enough, you know, Angel in White did, they did eventually put it on an album. I think it's on the Strike 10 album, which came out like early 2000s. But um but yeah, so but didn't make the album. So you know, for me, I'm gonna probably say Fireworks. It's it's a really good album. There are some songs on there I I pretty much uh, would prefer to sort of miss or skip. But um, but the ones I like, I really like. So I'm I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten. I tell you what, if they'd maybe taken a couple of those songs off and put those those B B-side songs on there that I like, it would be definitely a 9, maybe even a 9.5. So, really good album. Um, but yeah, like I said, for me, Bonfire, that's a good album. Really great album. I really love it. Um, but there are other albums, just okay. Like I said, the first album, yeah, it's alright. But I had high expectations for the next one. So the next one is... Um, Point blank, and this is actually when Hans Zilla uh, leaves the band, um, and there was a lot of hype, I think, over this release because Fireworks had done pretty well. It looked like that was just the start of something big, but then they didn't really get a lot of traction with this album. It was a lot of hits. There's a massive number of songs on here. I mean, the back, if you look at the back cover, uh, I don't know, like 15 songs or something like that. It's really a lot of songs, especially you know the the CD even has two more uh, songs. They couldn't fit them all on the vinyl. Um, yeah, and it's interesting, some of the songs that they didn't uh, put on the vinyl one, but they put on the CD one. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, I think um, I think Hard On Me might have been the single, but for me, the best song's Tony's, Tony's Roulette. Um, that's my favourite one off this album. Um, I've actually got a signed copy. This is just the way it turned up when I brought it uh, online. Um, and I've seen lots of other copies of the sign, so I think they did have to go through it. Uh, well, not lots, but I've seen a few other copies of this sign. So I think when, when they, the records went out to the record uh, shops, um, they'd probably pre-signed a whole lot of the, whole lot of the albums. But um, yeah, here's the four guys. So yeah, no, uh, it says Hans Zilla additional guitar. So he's he does play on it, but um, yeah, he's not actually in the band at this point. Um, I think he had some family issues or some things he needed to sort out, and the band weren't really that happy about his commitment or something I don't know to the band so he actually goes off and forms this band here so I'll show this this is Easy Living and this has got uh, Hans Zilla on it so um, yeah X Bonfire H, H Zilla's new band um, this, is come, this came out in 1991 um, pretty hard to find I would think um, but yeah uh, it's pretty good actually it's pretty good I quite like it um, 
good heavy melodic metal. Um, yeah, so it's it's pretty good. Um, but yeah, just one and done an album. I th- oh, actually no, they did they did do another album, but like in like maybe about nine years ago, something like that. But yeah, for the most part, really, it's just that's just a one off thing because um, Hans Zilla does come back into the band later on. But he's still not back when they put out uh, Knockout. So Knockout came out, I think, probably around about the same time, year 91 as well, when Easy Living came out. So they put this album out, um, produced by Mac. Yeah, again, yeah, a bit disappointing, really. I think, um, obviously, it's getting hard for bands like Bonfire around this time. But, um, you know, I'll, there's some good songs on here. Like, I like Dirty Love. Um, that's a good song. But, I mean, they've got a cover of The Stroke. I don't really know if that was a good idea. Um, but, um, yeah, and then I think they kind of, yeah, so, um, this is, uh, yeah, so Hans comes, I think he comes back into the band, uh, you know, after this album, but then the, um, the singer, Klaus Lesman, uh, leaves the band, uh, and they get, they get this guy here, I'll show the CD here, this is a guy called Michael Borman, um, this is actually a great CD, uh, really good. This is, I think, this is, this is a compilation. So um, I don't have anything else by him, but um, you know, I heard his stuff online. But this is a compilation. It's just called Rock Hard, and it's um, got got a lot of his best, best songs. Um, really good. Really, it's really solid. Anyway, um, so he's still putting out so- solo stuff, and um, uh, you know, he's been. I think he's been in Jaded Heart, the band Jaded Heart. Um, but uh, yeah, really good. Anyway, he he actually ends up. Um, singing for Bonfire, and they record an album, but then it doesn't actually get released, you know, because this is like 93, they suddenly realise, wow, this is, like, our music is just, this type of music is just dead in the water sort of thing, and uh, I guess they just didn't even bother releasing it, or couldn't get it released, so so he's in the band, but that never actually gets released, I think it might actually have got released later on, um, but uh, not at the time, um, yeah, and then eventually, uh, so it's kind of unofficially the band of Bonfire broken up just like a lot of these type of bands had to do from about 93 to sort of 97 sort of time where it was just really for bands doing sort of melodic metal you know hard rock put in that hair metal category they're just yeah very difficult for time for them so but um yeah then they um Hans and uh Klaus get back together again and they've been releasing uh albums fairly consistently you know since the late 90s um they released I had to get this because I'm such a fan of the fireworks album so they released this I think in about 2011 it's called Bonfire Fireworks Still Alive um it's got every song all the sort of the main songs you know all the songs from the the album that I showed um live recorded live so none of the b-sides and then it's got like um five or six you know sort of other songs from other albums um by the band but um yeah, so this was 2011. That said, it just says it's basically um, recorded. It doesn't actually say where it's recorded. Like, just recorded. In tw- it says recorded live all over Europe 2011. So, um, but yeah, I think this might be one of the last things, though, that um, uh, Klaus Lesman is on because, uh, yeah, he actually ends up leaving the band. Yeah, so he does... I think his last album is uh, branded, yeah, in 2011. And then he leaves, and then, um, yeah, David Reese actually from Accept and Bangalore Choir, he comes in and he, he's the vocalist in Bonfire for a little bit. Um, and then that, yeah, then he leaves. And I think, yeah, so I'm kind of losing track a little bit at this point. But they've got a new vocalist now. Um, and the, what what interesting too, what they've gone and done is they've gone and re recorded Don't Touch the Light, Fireworks, and Point Blank, maybe Knockout as well, I'm not sure. But they've definitely done those first three, um, re-recorded them. And they, actually, they sound pretty good. So it's slightly different. It's more modern sort of production. Um, I'm not so sure about the vocalist, though. I really miss um, uh, Claus Lesman. I just think he had actually he's a very good, good, very good vocalist, and he had uh, quite a distinctive uh quite distinctive vocal so um, yeah for me it's not the same without him but yeah the music itself that they've re-recorded sounds quite good uh, I've heard it digitally I don't have a physical copy of it but um, so yeah Hans is, so Hans is still going with the band um, like I say probably uh, probably the only original member I would think uh, but there's been a lot of people coming and going um, but uh, yeah a really good band They're very quite popular still uh, you know quite popular especially in Europe 
Um, but uh, yeah, there we go, Bonfire and the special sort of spotlight on their album Fireworks, which I'm pretty sure was their most successful album. All right, well, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you found that interesting. Hit that thumbs up. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't. And uh, I'll be back later. All right, we'll catch you later. See ya.